What I have left to do is I need to get a wall on the front of this that goes from the top plate up to the rafters. That way we can get the, sh the shiplap up there. But before I do that, I need to go in and shore up the front of the house. All right, so what I'm doing here is I'm jacking this up until it's level. Inside is actually pretty level. Most of my sag is in the soffit. So what I'm gonna do is once it's level, I'll put more supports back up underneath and then I'll go up inside, put in the structural supports in there for the front of the roof. And then I'll worry about screwing the soffit up so that it stays level too. Cause I'm probably gonna have to put several screws in that beam that runs across here. It's not really a beam, it's more of like a cap for the soffit between the soffit on the porch and the eaves. I'm not sure how much of this you'll actually be able to see, but what I'm going to do is I'm taking these two by 12s and screwing them up along the front there. It's just a little dim and kind of grainy from the light. And I don't currently have lighting here at the house, so we're gonna have to just make do. But just till you get the idea, that beam running across the front, the whole reason for leveling off the front of the soffit and the porch is so I can put this beam in and then reattach those. And I'll run that all the way across double thickness and reinforce that beam that's already there. Alright, so I did the same thing overlapping the two boards on this side and then I'll be able to put up the wall so that I can add the shiplap to the front of it. It's plumbing day! Yes, Woo! hopefully. We're, we're starting. <laughs> it's the beginning of the plumbing. So we're trying to figure out how we're going to lay everything out. Zeb initially thought putting a toilet this way, like facing the door, which I think is weird. I feel like most half baths, you have the vanity here and a toilet on the other side facing the vanity, so we're going to go with that. That's fine. Well, the trouble we have is I'm putting the air return for the HVAC on the back end of the bathroom that'll poke out with a big vent into the main part of the house. So I, it's smaller than it looks. Well, the thing is that'll just be behind the toilet and then above that we'll have like a big cabinet because we're doing this table with no storage underneath it for the vanity. So we yeah. need a cabinet to put like toilet paper and cleaning supplies. So we're not having to run to the other side of the house and grab stuff. Yep. So I'm gonna be cleaning out the base of this fireplace today while well, Zeb's downstairs prepping all the plumbing. So until he needs me, I'm doing something that's actually, you know, moving us ahead. I went ahead and looked underneath the fireplace. About here, there's metal straps and this is completely cemented in. Uh, my concern is that if we try to break through that, that this whole fireplace is just gonna crumble. It, will, it would not survive that. We could put a, gas insert in and maybe that's something we'll do in the future but I also don't want to ruin the integrity of the way it actually looks so I think we're going to just make it look as great as possible and use it as an architectural feature and then we'll revisit putting a gas insert in a few years down the road if we decide that's what we want to do. Okay, so I just want to show you what we're having to work with here. This is all solid cement here. So Zeb's going to have to grind that out to cut it smooth. We'll fill this in to where this is level here with cement because these are flooring joists. We can't cut those out. Once we make that level, then we'll do a layer of brick that just brings this up a little bit here. 
and then we'll either come this way with subway tile or we'll build the brick out a little bit so it looks like a proper fireplace but the brick's probably going to come to like right here i think we're running pex through the whole system of the house so cross-linked polyethylene is what pex stands for don't ask me how they got that acronym but i've got it set up to run three quarter inch main on this manifold and then there are six valves that can be attached to each side. I'm going to run cold on the right and hot on the left and then I've left it open so that I can add more if I need to as I go. Today I don't think I'm going to need more than six to plumb in the old part of the house so we're just going to stick with that. I'm going to be using pipe clamps to hold them onto my piece of plywood and I'm just screwing those in with inch and five eighths and then there's a little tab on here and that allows it to sit up a little bit so that I can get my fittings and valves and hoses all on there. So what I'll do when I get ready to hook this up is I've got this shutoff valve here and it's three quarter inch brass and what I'll do is that way I can just shut off the whole hot and cold if I need to all at once if I ever have any issues or need to do any maintenance on the system. So this end will be connected to the lines going to the house and this end here will be connected to the water main. All right, so I'm down here in the basement crawl space. Harrington's currently taking down the ceiling and the rest of the basement, and I am going to attach this. The lighting's kind of tough down here, but I'm gonna put these manifolds up right here on this wall. All right, so this is the back wall in the bathroom. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill a hole here and a hole here. This will be cold, this will be hot. And then I'll run that PEX up through here and then we'll make a tie off here that 90s out so that I can connect the fittings for the sink. And that is how hard it is to run the PEX pipe. It's flexible, it's frost resistant, puncture resistant. It's amazing stuff. This particular PEX can run up to 100 PSI. Some of it will run up to like 180 that I've seen. I don't know if it goes higher than that, maybe it does, but this is great for residential use. On this, I'm cutting it a little long. That way I know I have enough to run up to my faucet up there and then also to connect down below in the basement. So these little fasteners here come in packs of 50. They're really nice because they hold your line right where you want it to be and they keep it tucked up out of the way in your crawl space or in your walls or wherever you're running your pipe. When running your PEX pipe horizontally, you want to support it about every 32 inches. You can go a little less if you want. And that'll help keep it from getting sag and flexing when you've got a lot of water and pressure in there. Okay, I'm ready.
Okay, keep feeding it. Hold on. All right, I'm gonna feed it to you now. Oh, you're gonna feed it to me? Yeah. All right, I'm gonna go over there. No, just pull up out of this hole. It's already there. Yeah, but we need like a couple feet. Oh, you already have a couple feet. Oh, all right, we're good then. All we right, did. Crawl it out. So I can't really see this as we're filming, but I've just got the crimp on here and I'm going to poke it on so that it shows the direction of the water. Oh. And just feed that till it's flush. Leave about a sixteenth of an inch right there on the edge. Leave it a little proud. And then I've got this Apollo crimper and I got, I picked this up at Home Depot and my dad recommended this crimper for the PEX pipe. And it's got this little blue LED light that, this little blue light that comes on when you've got the right amount. It's got this little mouth opening here and you just press that up against there and ratchet it down and it crimps it really good. And he says he hasn't had any leaks or anything with this particular crimper. Let's see if we can see that light come on. There goes the light. Can you guys see it there? That's how you know you're tight enough. Just release it. And that's nice and crimped. You shouldn't have any wiggle or anything like that on that. And good to go. Now I just need to connect it up on the sink end to the faucet fittings once we get ready for that. And we'll be ready to run water through here as soon as we get the main hooked up. So I'm building a little wall here. The toilet will be on this side of it and in here in this section we'll have the air return for the HVAC and I'm only taking it up to 48 inches and then above that we're going to do cabinets for like a linen closet or storage or bathroom supplies whatever we want to put in there. So today's video might not be as exciting to you as it is to us because we're like this much closer to not having to pee at the park anymore. Yeah, we got a park real close and it is open until 10 o'clock at night. And uh, since I ripped all the plumbing and the water and everything out of here, that's where we've been Just having to Just take a little walk. <laughs> no, we're excited. This week we're gonna be getting fixtures and a toilet into the bathroom. Maybe not usable until we dig up the water main, but at least getting closer to being finished, maybe get some shiplap up, it'll be good. Yeah, hopefully. You may get to see Jamie put the shiplap up. I'm gonna get her started so it's all nice and level. You while, know? You're, while you're doing more plumbing? While I do more plumbing and things, so we'll see. <laughs> if you wanna support our channel, be sure to give us a thumbs up, comment below with what your favorite part of today's video is, and share it with your friends. Be sure to visit jamierayvintage.com for all your DIY and paint product needs, and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY. Hit the subscribe button.